who doesn't like a love story, who doesn't like a legend? I love them personally. The views from this side of the river are splendid. Can you see this pink marble of which it was made? I honestly have very strange feelings. Verona is actually a very popular tourist destination thanks to search on Sir William, mostly. However, I want to show you a very different Verona today. I want to show you Verona that most tourists don't see ever, probably, because we're gonna visit some of the places quite hidden from the eyes of uh, tourists because they are reserved for true travelers. In the meantime, please admire this fantastic view because I already love it so, so much. And now, guys, if you're ready, let's go and explore Hidden Verona. Of course, there is no historic evidence left about whether the story of Romeo and Juliet actually took place, whether it actually happened, whether there were these uh, historical characters. However, who doesn't like a love story? Who doesn't like a legend? I love them personally, and uh, local people love them too. So they actually started to look for uh, some indications that this story has actually happened in Verona. And we know for sure that there were indeed the two families, uh, the Montecchi family and the Capuletti family, known better today as the Capulet, Capuletti, anyway, the right surname was Capuletti. Uh, they were from different fractions, the Guelphs and the Ghibellines. And while there is no evidence uh, left, no record left about the rivalry between the Montecchi and the Capuletti family, there are several historical records about the rivalry the Montecchi family had with other families of Verona. So this story seems to have uh, at least some historical basis something that we can say that, right, it happened in Verona. And by the way, the Montacchi and the Capuletti family were both cited in Dante's Divine Comedy while he stayed here in Verona. So today in Verona, there is a notorious house of Juliet that is the historical house indeed inhabited by the Capuletti family uh, in the Middle Ages. However, that place is so touristic and so overcrowded that I personally wouldn't recommend you visiting it. And instead, I want to bring you to the Juliet tomb. When the story became popular and tons of tourists, of travelers, started flowing to Verona in order to see for themselves the place where this whole story happened, the locals decided to analyze the play in order to find more, uh, more places linked to the story. So they found this uh, place where we are going now and um, how did they find it? Basically, it was kind of a detective work put in there. Um, the Franciscan convent, the ex-Franciscan convent that today is desecrated, was the only convent located uh, out of the uh, city walls in the, by the end of the 13th century. And according to the perfect, well, imperfect plan of Romeo and Juliet, Juliet had to be buried outside, like buried, you know, for the first time, buried outside uh, of the city walls because Romeo was exiled from the city, so he couldn't get inside Verona. So that's why it was quite logical to um, make this uh, fake burial site outside of the city wall so he can access it quite easily. This place was the only Franciscan convent. And why uh, are we talking about Franciscan convent? Because uh, Friar Lawrence, one of the basically the protagonist of the whole uh, story of the, that whole plan uh, who helped Romeo and Juliet was a Franciscan friar. So it was quite logical to find this place as the place where Juliet had to be buried. When this place was decided as the most likely place of Juliet's burial, 
uh, people started exploring it and they found an empty sarcophagus made of uh, pink Verona marble with no name written on it, with no writing whatsoever. And rightly so, they assumed that this could have been the right, uh, the true tomb of Juliet. And, um, you know, I think they had their uh, reasons to assume so. This place has become very, very popular among travelers and even Lord Byron came here to pay it a visit and he stated how tragic this place was, how it reflected the tragic love between Romeo and Juliet. And I think, you know, this whole uh, allure of this um, tragic but romantic story anyway, what was what, what uh, brought so many um, people, including some famous people here to Verona, to, to see this place, to feel this atmosphere, to probably understand what was so special about this city. Now guys, this sarcophagus was originally found in the garden and then later it was brought down here. And can you see this pink marble of which it was made? Uh, the Austrian Emperor Joseph II paid a huge amount of money to buy the cover of the sarcophagus and later Marie Louise of Habsburg, the Empress of France, ordered a couple of earrings and a necklace to be made of the pieces of the cover of this very same sarcophagus. Can you imagine it? Guys, look at this garden. It is so peaceful that uh, I can understand why Juliet's tomb was uh, placed here before. And yes, I think it's a, it's a perfect place for the end of that tragic but very tender love. I personally think that Juliet's tomb is uh, a more authentic place to visit if you want to feel better this uh, uh, story of Romeo and Juliet and if you want to see different Verona without crowds of tourists because as you might have seen there were almost no people there were just very few people walking there and it was uh, a very nice very pleasant visit I would say and by the way besides the tomb of Juliet in this place there is now an area where uh, a civil uh, marriage could be registered there's like kind of in the registry a uh, registry office and uh, uh, many couples of Verona choose this place to get married because it seems very symbolic to them uh, as, uh, you know, uh, a symbol of an eternal love, uh, the love until death separates them. And I don't know how do I feel about this place uh, to get married potentially, but yeah, just so that you know, if you want uh, uh, to get married in Italy, you can get married near the Temple of Juliet. Honestly guys, I can't stop marveling at the Italian courtyards, no matter how many of them have I seen before in other cities, but they are always spectacular. And I'm going to show you another one in just a moment. This place is most definitely not exactly a courtyard. This is a huge and spectacular garden, which is called Giardino Giusti. The Giusti family uh, bought this land in the 13th century when they moved from Tuscany to Verona in order to develop their industry of uh, wool coloring. And initially they were using this area as uh, the place to store the boiling cauldrons, well, to to produce all the, all the color. However, in the 15th century, they transformed this place into this magnificent garden. They built the palace that you can probably see there, over there. There is the palace uh, of, of the Giusti family. And they've lived here until 1944, when uh, because of the bombings, that palace was 
uh, badly damaged and they couldn't live there anymore. And today it is um, available for public visits because it was restored in the middle of the 20th century. Guys, just look at this view. How beautiful is it? You can see the whole Verona from here. And here is another spectacular view from this uh, garden. Basically, no matter where are you going, you'll find this amazing views over the city. In the 17th and 18th century, when the Grand Tour became very popular, which was uh, a traditional European trip usually undertaken by a uh, young upper-class man. This garden, Giardino Giusti, was one of the main attractions of the tour. It was an obligatory stop, a must-visit place for them. And this garden was visited by Mozart, by Goethe, by uh, the Tsar Alexander of Russia, by the Austrian Emperor, and by many other intellectuals and representatives of nobility. And I can totally get why, because just look how beautiful is it. Sadly, we don't have much time today, but I would love to come back and explore it for the whole day, because it's enormous. We went all the way up and there are many more levels, because uh, it's structured in levels. We went up a few levels, I don't really remember how many, three or four levels. And yeah, it's huge and it's so beautiful with all the archways, with all the hidden alleys. Anyway, I'm already breathless from all the walking and climbing up. Not because it's so hot, but because it's very, very humid today. But this beauty is so worth it. I absolutely love this place. Now let's go and explore the apartment that was inhabited by the Giusti family. Come on. just look at how beautiful this place is it's perfectly conserved it feels like the owners were here just yesterday and wow i have no words it's it's amazing it's immense can you just see it it feels like a time capsule a real time capsule if it wasn't a museum i would have thought that this is an abandoned manor or something like that because Ah, wow, it doesn't feel like a museum. This part, on the other hand, was occupied by Luftwaffe commandment from the 1943. And basically they cohabited with the Giusti family who lived in the apartment just across the corridor. And this place was reserved for uh, Luftwaffe. It was sequestered and then reserved for them. And it's so empty today and it feels uh, so weird being here. I honestly have very strange feelings, but I think that the emptiness of this room reflects its quite recent history. Guys, look where we are. We are backstage in the Roman theater. And this is not Arena di Verona. This is a very different theater that is so worth a visit. Look how magnificent is it! Guys, this is the Roman theatre and it's incredible. It was built in the first century BC and... Ah, oh, 
Can you imagine just how old is it? You can touch everything, you can sit here, uh, imagine people in the Roman times uh, watching the, the various shows here, and you can still admire the shows in this theater. There is, of course, Arena di Verona, which is a very famous uh, landmark of this city, and there are lots of uh, important concerts and uh, theater performances going on there. However, personally, I am not a huge fan of Arena di Verona. Well, first of all, if you want to visit just to see the theater without attending a show, it costs more. Here you pay a very small fee for attending a theater and an archaeological museum afterwards. So it's like two uh, in one ticket and it costs less. And also, I think it's way more authentic because uh, Arena di Verona is mostly covered with uh, all the modern uh, equipment and it's very modernized and I think well it, it might be good for the show of course and for your comfort during the show or concert it's very more authentic here can you see there are the places uh, saying that uh, well basically these are your seats and uh, you can admire a show or a concert here as well you can just uh, look at the website of this uh, theater and I will leave you a link in the description box and check out the uh, concerts uh, or the shows that are going on here. They will most probably cost you less than the ones in Arena di Verona and I think you will probably enjoy them a teeny tiny bit more. It's my personal opinion. Of course, if you like Arena di Verona, there's nothing wrong with it and I've been there and I like it as well. Just here it feels more authentic and uh, also being a little bit more small it feels like a bit more conscious travel for me and feels more uh, contributing to uh, this community to visit this place because it is not as often visited by tourists as Arena di Verona. Guys there is the scene in preparation for the show that will be held tonight I guess and I'm so impressed because you know I'm always very emotional when I get inside the theaters especially Roman theaters. Here up the uh, Castel San Pietro hill, the views are fantastic. This is one of the best views of Verona, I think. Uh, yeah, you can uh, overlook the hills, the, the city, the river, and it's spectacular. And you can get here by the cable car. Uh, the cable car is actually very inexpensive. It costs uh, just one euro fifty for one-way ticket or two fifty for a round trip. Or you can opt for climbing up uh, on foot or going back down on foot. We were, uh, came here by the cable car and we're going to uh, go down on foot, so we'll just have a little nice walk. And uh, it's one of my favorite places in Verona, honestly. Uh, not many travelers and many tourists get up here, but it's uh, worth it. It's very calm and peaceful and the view is insane. This hill was inhabited in the Roman times. There used to be Roman buildings and then Longobard buildings. and. Uh, then the first castle was built by Galeazzo Visconti, the Duke of Milano, in the 14th century. However, it was destroyed in the 19th century uh, after the Austrians uh, conquered the area and uh, they later rebuilt uh, this area in the form of a barracks a fortress. And, you know, barracks are barracks. So this modern castle uh, is quite modern, in fact, it was built in the 19th century. And the sad uh, story that I think about its uh, construction is that while constructing, the uh, Austrian army destroyed some of uh, the Roman heritage, uh, the Middle Ages heritage uh, left here, the uh, foundations of the older buildings, the, um, the things that were found here while uh, some works were being made here. And it's a very sad thing. And some Italian archaeologists, uh, historians uh, say that uh, it's, it's in fact is a huge loss for the history of Verona and you know it's a sad thing but that's the fact that some nations unfortunately might have less uh, propensity towards conserving the the history and uh, their archaeological heritage as much as Italians do because I think in Italy everyone is very passionate about its culture and history and it's con and his or her country and uh, that's why uh, people here tend to conserve 
the things, even the smallest things, better in my opinion. But the, the historians say, think the same, so it's kind of a fact, you know. But it's still nice to walk here, and the views here are amazing, and it's so worth visiting the, the hill for, for the views and for a very pleasant walk. So let's go and, and go down to the city. Guys, the views from this side of the river, the opposite side from the city center, are splendid. Just look at how beautiful this view is. And in my personal opinion, this side of the river is actually a bit more interesting than the city center because some of the greatest landmarks, the hidden gems that I've shown you today, are located here. And I just want to tell you, don't be afraid to explore. Explore a bit further than your tour guide suggests you. Ditch your tour guides and uh, venture out and see the city for yourself the way the locals see this side of Verona is uh, also home for the University of Verona and being the university area there are lots of nice uh, bars and places and you know the university area the students are always fun to be around so don't be afraid to come here and explore and I hope that with this video you might be inspired to take a bit of a different trip to Verona especially if you've been here already and if you've seen the city center already I hope you'll be inspired to see more to look further than what most tourists, uh, tourists see and yeah this is the aim of, uh, of my channel and of these videos that I make and with that guys uh, it's time to say goodbye that's it for today I hope you like this video don't forget to put a thumbs up to comment to share it with your friends so more people can uh, see this project can see this channel and uh, get the chance to see hidden gems of Italy of Italian uh, cities and Towns. And if you're new here, I hope you like my channel. Welcome! Don't forget to subscribe, to hit the bell button to get the notifications of upcoming videos because I talk a lot about conscious travel and uh, a bit different travel than uh, what most tourists see. Thank you for being here and enjoy your day!